what I did was to travel to another remote part of, of that uh, state just to pray for a week. But God told me that is not the place. He moved me to another place. So started my journey in the year 2005. I started with a pastor friend of mine, but uh, I had to go on my own because it was my discovery. And I prayed and fasted for that year 2005. I fasted and prayed for all together. It was about nine months of the whole year. When I first started, my wife was afraid because I wasn't eating. I was going without food for two days, three days, and all like that. My wife was afraid of that. But the wisdom of God started coming with me, and I was able to balance it up. And I fasted for almost nine months of that year. On the 11th month of the year 2005, there is some group of people that usually come to pray with me in my house, besides in prayers and fasting that I do all over the place. These people came on this particular day in November 2005 and we started praying like we usually do. We start praying from the hours of maybe 2 in the morning up till, up till dawn. That we pray from 2 till the sun breaks, till, till the light comes. So we started praying that day and as I knelt down that day, I, I, I still had that problem, but I still had this problem of addiction, but because I was fasting and praying through, almost throughout that year, I wasn't really able to you know, do any of those things, but I know the desire, the, 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 the thing was still in me, the flesh was still in me, that if not for this prayer and fasting I'm doing, I would have you know, gone back to it one way or the other. I knelt down that day. And as I knelt down, I, I was praying in the Spirit. As I was praying in the Spirit, light was released from heaven. This light hit my spirit, and that was it. It was days later, I saw the light in my spirit. It was days later the Lord now started explaining to me that I have set you free, and I have given you the key to set others free. I received that vision and that was the ministry to America and God started preparing me from the year 2005 up to this point and the Lord said this is the time just like it was in the 11th month I received that uh, word and ministry the Lord said on this 11th year of the new millennium go and release this word so this is my story of my journey into, through, and out of pornography. So that is my story. And I'm going to start with the revelation right now. The revelation goes like this. In Romans chapter 5 verse 20. Romans chapter 5 verse 20 says, Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Listen to me, there is no amount of sin you have committed. The grace of God goes beyond it. In the world today, men are doing different kind of evil. But the grace of God goes beyond the evil of men to save men. There is, you cannot go too far from God that God cannot reach out to pick you up. The grace is there. Then in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, it says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, they are not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. We are in the new dispensation, the dispensation of grace, where the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed. It's a new beginning for man. God said in the Old Testament prophesying about what is happening today, I will give them a heart. I will give them a new heart. I will take away the stony heart and give them a heart of flesh. And he said, no man will tell his neighbor, seek ye the Lord. But he said, from the least to the greatest, they shall know me. 
why you're listening, why you're focusing on this uh, broadcast right now is because God has put a, f a heart of flesh in you and you are able to understand and grasp what I am speaking through, through the Spirit of God. So no matter how far you have gone in your addiction, mine was over 20 years, no matter what you are bounded by, the grace of God is sufficient to reach out to you. The mercy of God is enough to reach even beyond where you have, how far you have gone and save you. So the word for this, uh, for this revelation is this. In Romans chapter 14, sorry, in Romans chapter 7 verse 25, Apostle Paul said, I thank God through Jesus our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law, law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. I'm going to explain three, this to you quickly. Man is three, so three, man is, uh, is in three parts. Man is spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Remember in Genesis I talked about how uh, the connection between God and man was broken. After Jesus died on the cross and uh, you and I gave our hearts to the Lord, the connection, there was a reconnection of our spirit. There was a reconnection of what did I say? of our spirit. The spirit of God, the spirit of man, is the only part of man that is connected to God. The other parts of man is connected to this world. Man uses these other parts to operate in the world, but the spiritual part, he uses it to operate in the spirit and with God. So the, the most important connection is just the spirit. If the spirit is not connected, you, you don't have you don't have any you don't have any uh, 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 life in you. It's like connecting a light bulb. The the, the 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 cords can be connected, but until power flows through it, there will be no light. So man can say he loves God. You see people of different kind of. Uh, with different kind of uh, ways that they feel they, they know God. But their spirit is not connected to Him. When you are not connected to God in the spirit, then your flesh, your soul and your body will only do things that appears to be godly, that appears like you know God. But once, when that spirit is not connected, uh, Man is still dead. So man is spirit, soul, and body. And the moment you give your heart to the Lord, the spirit is connected. And once there is connection in the spirit, the soul is as affected. The soul starts to receive life. Every good thing starts to penetrate into the soul. And once good things start to penetrate into the soul, which is uh, the soul comprises of your mind, your, 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 your will, the mind and your will, and also even your intellect, every the, the, the center of reasoning. Once the spirit is connected, every good thing starts to flow. Just like God said in Genesis uh, chapter 6, I guess, He said, the thoughts, the imaginations of the heart of man was continually evil. So the moment you give your heart to the Lord, there is a reconnection of your spirit with God, then good thoughts start to enter into your soul. Then you start to think good thoughts, and before you know it, your body starts to act. Uh, in, in, a, in a good way, in a holy way. But the dilemma of believers, why we have people going to church that uh, still have these baggage states. The spirit actually is connected, but that connection has to be maintained every moment. Why? Because we have other connections. Our soul is connected to the world and our flesh is connected to the world. And the world has the ability to influence us. So how do we influence? How do we influence our soul and body by our spirit's connection with God? It is by reading the word of the Lord, reading the Bible, prayers, 
and especially communion with the Lord. You have to always go into the Spirit. Remember in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, And the Lord came in the cool of the day, trying to have fellowship with Adam. So that fellowship must be ongoing. Because we are on this earth and the world already is evil. The world already is corrupted. So how can you live in this world successfully without a connection that is maintained and ongoing? And how do you maintain a connection with God without prayers and knowing His will through His word? Most believers today, why they are, they, they are, their spirit is not influencing their soul and their body is because they are not in connection with God. And once you are not in connection with the Spirit, you start operating by the law. And when you start operating by the law, you start finding what Apostle Paul was saying in, uh, was saying in Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through up to uh, 25. He said, the law is good. But because the law said I should not covet, Lust started coming out in me. As at that time, Apostle Paul was like a carnal Christian. He wasn't, uh, con he was connected in the spirit, but he allowed the things of the environment, the things of the world, to affect him. That is, this, the, the influence of the world was greater than the influence of the spirit, of the spirit of God. So once you influence, once you, you operate, or you are influenced by the things of this world that is operating by the law. And the Bible says anyone that breaks just one part of the law, is, he has broken every part of the law. But when you connect with the Spirit of God by communion, by studying the Word of God, you live by the law of grace, which is above the law, of, which is above the law. You live, you pray by grace and not by, by law. So what did Apostle Paul find? Jesus, when he died on the cross, I said in the beginning of this of these videos, I said we are bringing back the cross of Jesus Christ to the center stage in these last days. We are bringing back the finished work of Jesus Christ to the center stage in these last days. The first video on uh, the first video on the the topic that is uh, freedom seminar. The first video on freedom seminar talked about. Uh, the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ finished this work on the cross on how we can read of our flesh. And we are bringing the cross of Jesus Christ to the main, to the center stage in these last days. Like I said in that um, video, I said, Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so much the Son of Man be lifted up. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. This ministry is going to lift up the cross of Jesus Christ. It's going to lift up Jesus Christ and His finished work for men to see that Jesus is the answer to the problem. Whatever you are addicted to, whatever you are struggling with, Jesus is the answer. And I'm going to open the seal of what He did at the cross for you to get the benefits of the cross, of the finished work of Jesus at the cross. So in 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> Chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, the Bible says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Listen to me, it is on the...